All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we want to start tonight by acknowledging the situation that occurred at our graduation ceremony yesterday. Uh, first, I am sorry to all of our families, students, and staff that we had to endure such a scary situation. I know that I'm not alone when I say that I'm angry that adults would ruin such a special occasion for our school community. Our students, our families, our staff, and entire school community deserve better. But when tragedy occurs, we also get a glimpse of who we are as a community. What I saw yesterday was our school administrators, our SROs, staff members, students, and audience members jumping into action, working together to help keep each other safe. That is who we are as a school community. We take care of each other. I know that was what the main focus of the day. That I know that was the main focus of the day. And if there are any other questions, comments, we do encourage you to stay after and speak with us. But with that, I'd like to turn over to Dr. Binion. I just want to say again, I want to say again, thank you, uh, Mr. Ritter. Uh, first off, I want to say thank you to the entire Cape community, to our surrounding school districts who have sent words of encouragement and support supports to us over the last 24 hours. I'm sure I've had hundreds and hundreds of texts. Um, I apologize if I haven't gotten back to everyone. Uh, my first priority was our staff and our students, and that's we made that our priority today. Um, <clears throat> today our focus was on making sure our staff members feel supported and the senior class felt supported. We are offering counseling services tomorrow, 10 to 2, at Cape Central Middle School and Cape Central High School. This support is open to any of our staff, students, their families, or anyone in the community in need of counseling at this time. We do feel it's extremely important that we address our entire community because this has impacted our entire community. So please, if you're interested in coming and talking to a counselor, please come to one of those facilities tomorrow between 12 and 2 o'clock. <clears throat> Sorry. If there is ever a question over whether the youth of today possesses empathy, it was fully on display today at the high school. While our teachers were concerned about their students, their students were equally as concerned about them. One of the heartbreaking things that I saw, which was a, a joy to me, was our students were bringing our teachers food. They made cookies for them. They were hugging them. These were our seniors that are leaving us. You want to talk about resiliency? These kids have the resiliency. And I'm super proud of our school district. I'm super proud of those, those students. Those students were those students that, that started in COVID. And, and, and I will tell you one thing, one good thing about COVID, it taught those kids resiliency. So I'm super proud of them. And we will make sure, sorry, I'm getting emotional because it was very heart touching. And we want to make sure that we serve them well. And we're going to, and we're going to give them an opportunity. It may not be the graduation that they think that they're going to get, but we're still going to give them love. And they're going to have an opportunity to walk the stage if they want to, but we're going to have to do it in a controlled way and in a safe way. Moving forward, I want everyone to know that we have taken this situation very seriously and we're putting protocols in place. But it's not us. It's not us that needs to make the difference. It's the, everyone sitting out here. This is a community issue. This is not a school district issue. This is a community issue that came to our school. So we're gonna to have to do something as a community to change this. And I encourage all of you to step up when someone calls on you to speak up about what's going on in our community because we have to have a safe community moving forward. Um, that's all that I have to say and I appreciate you all for being here tonight. Uh, this, is, this was hard for us to come up here and have this board meeting, but we want to show our community we are united sitting around this table here. We're united and we're ready to move forward and we're ready to make a change in our community, but we can't do it alone. It has to be you, everyone in our community. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Dr. Binion. 
So I'd like to go ahead and call to order this regular monthly board meeting of the Cape Girardeau Board of Education. It is Monday, May 20th, and the time is now 6-12. Let the record flow that... Let the record show that all board members are present. And please rise as we pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, board, before you have an agenda, can I get a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Mr. Welker and Mr. Cook, thank you. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, first up, we have recognitions. And starting with one of our own, Dr. Missy Fagley. I'll turn it over to Dr. Binion. So Dr. Fagley has been one of our... Uh, valued board members and she's been working hard on her our certificate board member certificates and she has reached the master level for uh, board membership certificates and advanced level so she has gone as far as you can go you want to tell us a little bit about what you had to do to uh, earn these I'm sorry I don't mean to I'm glad I put you on the spot now Doctor. Uh, I had to read a couple of books for for each level I had to read a couple of books on um, education, leadership, just there, there's a range of books. Um, and then I had to write an essay <laughs> for each one about uh, my experience on the board, different things that I have learned about being a board member. So, well, well congratulations. Can we get a picture yes. with her? Oh, I also had to attend oh. a lot of <laughs> professional development training. Yes, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> You, do I need to get you a stool? <laughs> Can someone get this stool? Over my heels today. So. All right, and up next, one of my favorite things to celebrate, our Terrific Tigers. So we're going to read our Terrific Tigers. Parents, we're going to call your student up here to take a picture. Do not be afraid to step in the aisle, take your own picture, or stand up to be celebrated because we know how important you are to this process as well. So, Terrific Tigers. So this first one, I'm a little, uh, I, I know pretty well. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Strata Elementary, Eliza Cook, first grade daughter of Sarah and Casey Cook. I pronounced it correctly. <laughs> So Eliza is a superstar student. She comes to school every day ready to learn and gives 100%. She's not only an amazing student, but she's a great friend to all. She's a blessing to all her teachers and peers. Congratulations, Eliza. We're so proud of you. Wait for Casey to get in the picture. Yeah. 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 Come up here, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, doesn't Sarah get to go up there, too? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Blanchard Elementary, Caspian Guerrero, first grade son of Quintessa and Carlos Guerrero. <laughs> Caspian just oozes kindness. He's a stellar student who's working on third grade classwork in first grade. He listens attentively and is quick to bring a smile to a friend or a teacher. His quiet personality doesn't hold him back. It allows him to be a gentle leader. He brings joy to all those around him. Keep up the great work, Caspian. Clippert Elementary, Samantha Baker, fourth grade daughter of Sarah and Adam Baker. <laughs> Samantha is a joy to have in class. She follows the rules and encourages others to do the same. She always puts forth her best effort and will happily help others when they need help with their work. 
She will also help out around the classroom whenever it is needed. She's a great example of a Clipper terrific tiger. Way to go, Samantha. Franklin Elementary, Kazarian White, first grade son of Tanisha White. <laughs> Jefferson Elementary, Chloe Taylor, second grade daughter of Sierra Jackson. <laughs> Chloe is a remarkable example of an exemplary student. Her kindness towards others, cheerful attitude, determination, and hard work ethic proves that she is more than great. She's terrific. We're very proud that Chloe is a Je Jefferson student and knows she will move on to succeed tremendously. Congratulations, Chloe. <laughs> Central Middle School, Virginia Rose Miller, fifth grade daughter of Elizabeth and Frank Miller. Virginia Rose always comes to class prepared and can always be counted on to follow classroom and hallway expectations. She's an excellent peer tutor in the classroom and always willing to help students who may be struggling. She's a wonderful friend to all and is always willing to lend an extra hand. Virginia Rose is a terrific role model and she has such a bright future ahead. <laughs> Terry W. Kitchen Junior High, Edwin Omar Pacheco Santiago, eighth grade son of Celia Pacheco Santiago and Justino Perez Velasco. Central High School, Sarah Shaheen, 12th grade daughter of Suhar Amer and Bashar Shaheen. Central Academy, Sullivan Cummins, 7th grade son of Robert and Bethany Cummins. Great. From April, Franklin Elementary, Kyron Collins, kindergarten son of Takira McClellan. <laughs> Kyron is always a great listener and does his best. He is so sweet and always goes above and beyond to help out his classmates. Kyron is always following directions and setting a good example to his peers. Congratulations and keep up the great work, Kyron. <laughs> You're in the big picture, man. <laughs> Jefferson Elementary, Ray Lynn and Rael Bowen, third grade granddaughters of Tamara Baker. <laughs> Terry W. Kitchen Junior High, Alexandra Johnson, seventh grade daughter of Tyra and Brian Johnson. <laughs> Central High School, Vi Tron, twelfth grade brother of Nala No and Jada Lee. And Central Academy, Jaden Moore, 11th grade son of Alicia Fry. You are welcome to stay, but <laughs> sometimes known as the great escape. <laughs> Thank you all. Congratulations. Good job. <laughs> Congrats, kiddo. <laughs> Love it. Totally. Proud of himself, as he should be. All right. Up next, we have information, proposals, or comments from the audience. Mr. Payne, do we have anybody this month? No, sir. 
Okay, and we do read this every single board me uh, meeting just for process. Request to place an item on the agenda or to address the board should be submitted in writing at least five days in advance of the regular monthly board meeting. Please submit request to the board secretary at the central administration office, which is Mr. Payne. Constituents who request to address the board are allotted three minutes to speak. And for more information regarding public participation in board me meetings, please see board policies on the district's website. So up next, we have informational reports. Um, and first up is the board president's report. I don't have much to add tonight to what I've already said, but I did get to participate in the foundation golf tournament um, last Monday, and I'm not a golfer, but I actually hit a couple balls. Is that right, Mr. Payne? So, and then <laughs> we have also the upcoming, you have to help me on dates, uh, Paul and Casey, the upcoming July 12th, July 12th is the Booster Club golf tournament so we'll be looking for that maybe i'll stretch my legs again Bring it that's all i have this evening up next we have the superintendent's report dr binion i've said a lot as well hopefully i'll hold back the emotions on this one a little bit more um just to, with my res, um, superintendent report we wanted to uh just talk about our, our participation in our first ever uh, leadership, aspiring leadership academy. And we have several of them out here. Uh, we had a great opportunity to learn a lot from them. So it, I know that we had this leadership academy so that you could learn, but we learned a lot from you as well. And we're, we're actually looking at your materials on how we can help our district move forward as well. So we appreciate all of the hard work that you put in. Uh, creating their presentation. So there was a culminating activity at the end and uh, they got to do those presentations with us. Dr. Beck, I don't know if you want to add anything else to that. I'm just very impressed. Um, uh, this is something that Dr. Beck had started this year with our uh, just our leadership team in general. Yeah, just to kind of recap, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, the whole program was dedicated to staff committed to developing their leadership skills in preparation for eventually either becoming an assistant principal or an aspiring principal in the district, but more importantly, just building teacher leadership within our schools. Um, they had to meet various times throughout the school year for multiple two-hour meetings that included topics like culture and climate, building facilities and operations, curriculum, instruction and assessment, human resources operations, budgeting and school finance, special education and legal op obligations as a district, and then communicating your vision as a school leader. Um, that culminating event that Dr. Binion mentioned was actually an action research project that they presented to our entire district leadership team. So I invited all principals across the district, cabinet set in on that. We had other multiple visitors that came in and they just blew away our expectations. They set the bar so high moving forward into the next cohort. <laughs> so without getting, without just talking, I wanna go ahead and introduce this group and have them come up to the uh, podium right here. So we have Tyler Loppy, Project-Based Learning Coordinator at Jefferson Elementary. Courtney Hanstein, Special Education Teacher at Jefferson Elementary. Ashton Doran, Psych Examiner at Early Childhood. Amy Dunn, our After School Program Director. Shannon Ritter, math teacher at CHS. Shannon Burgoff, student interventionist at Central Middle School. Caitlin <laughs> Contreras, elementary teacher at Central Middle School. And then I believe we have one more participant, Laura John, elementary teacher at Blanchard. And she has an extra oh, one with her. During this time, she had an extra one. And plus one. That participated, plus one. <laughs> Yeah. Oh boy, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so they know that one of the things I like to do in Leadership Academy is kind of put them on the spot and challenge them. Um, I'm going to welcome whoever wants to go to them to just talk to the board about what their experience was participating in this cohort. We're going to see, we're going to see what leader emerges on the mic. You're the male. <laughs> Tyler, you can just pass it around to whoever wants to talk. Hold it for Laura. Her hands yeah. are full. <laughs> um, it was such a great experience just to learn the different parts of administration. Um, as a teacher, you see your point, your, your room, and what your life is like. Um, and the cohort allowed us to see all the different aspects that take to make 
our lives as a teacher run, but as the, the district to run and how it takes a group to work together and to have such a good bond with one another to, to make it effective and have an education, a good education for all of the students and staff to be happy and, you know, feel that community in within it and as and the board and admin together. So <laughs> Shannon, you're never without words too. I know you want to say something. <laughs> Come on. All the plot. It's contrary. It's come up here. Okay, this yeah, this will work. Yeah, that's good. All right. So throughout the program, um, I'm also the youngest one here, so this is the largest thing I'd done thus far in my life. So to say I was nervous is quite an understatement. Um, but throughout the program, we had a book that we were uh, required to read as well, and it was talking about finding your leadership strengths and things that you have to do as a leader. And for the future, uh, even though there are uh, positions I'm not in yet, I found it powerful going forward uh, what I was going to be able to excel in and maybe what I need to appoint other people to help me with along the way. I just wanted to add that it was um, really important to feel like we were valued in our thoughts. Um, there weren't stupid questions, even though I tried. Um, <laughs> so just being um, able to have open um, communication of, hey, this is what I'm concerned about, this is what I don't know about, and being able to hear those different perspectives was really important. It's awesome. Um, I just wanted to say that I think all eight of us were the best group that I could have chosen to work with. And I think that any of us would be amazing administrators for our district. And a lot <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I think I that I love works. how you advocate for yourself. <laughs> no, I, I didn't really come out the way I meant to. I just think that we all like grew together really well. Like, because we've talked about that. Like, we plan on going out together after this and even talking about our experience. What we started with in August to what we ended up with, with in May, we all grew and we all learned and we all talked to each other. And even though our pro we were talking about our projects earlier, like they were all different, but kind of the same, but like we all see the aspects differently, but we all really grew together. Um, and we kind of talked about how we want to continue that, so. And Dr. Beck, you can go up there and take a picture with them because this was your brainchild. We want you to be proud of what you created. I will have to say this. This is an important piece of what we do in our district and really emphasizing leadership. Whether they go back into the classroom, they become leaders in their, in their buildings as well. So I'm super proud of them. Jared, go up there. Wait a minute. Jared wants to get in the picture with you. He's making Hey, let me hold that baby. Yeah, you know. Oh. <laughs> when I see her holding it, I'm like, oh my God. Yes, yeah, the sleigh. Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 like you keep it. You have pretty good things about it. I did not have that problem. I was like, you keep that baby. You don't want to No, this is what's great. You get the baby snuggles and then you and give you them smell away. It. You can <laughs> smell it. They go back to mom. You get the baby snuggles. I didn't get to tell you, Laura, but congratulations. <laughs> all right, thank you all. Up next, we have. Um, let's, oh, yeah, that was under your report, so are you that done? Mine. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm done. Okay. I was like, that was, that was, like, that was a long Bank. report, actually. I have to pass that on to Dr. Bain. Okay. That was it. Thank you. <laughs> Just kidding. Up next, we have CSIP program evaluations, and we have CSIP lead number one. Good evening, board. Uh, so I'll just give a brief overview because this will go into more detail later on at the end of the meeting uh, with what you have before you and what was given out. So. Uh, LEAD 1 is part of our CSIP plan on developing a long-range facility plan, and I kind of want to talk to you about the process, what we looked at, and uh, where we are involved, and then I'll kind of stop there and then tell you more as we get to the business portion of it. So 
what we're wanting to accomplish with this long range facility plan and I think what will be in front of you, I know what will be in front of you later for approval is a group that will help us get there. What we're needing to do is identify uh, our district needs for the next 10 years, not just structurally and infrastructurally, but also making sure that the facilities that we're providing match up to the curriculum that we're delivering and that we have a product that when kids are going in, if they're working on something that's project based or if they're working on a group or collaborative approach or whatnot, that that learning environment fits that need so that they can have the best experience possible in order to learn the curriculum that we're teaching them. This will also cover such things as parking lots and roofs and HVAC and things of that nature, but that's kind of the unglamorous uh, portion of it. Um, but the, our process that we had asked for and put out is we wanted to make sure that we would have an organization that would lead our community and not just our schools uh, through this process. So there will be multiple interview sessions with community members. There'll be interview sessions with administrators and staff and buildings, with our teachers, with our parents, uh, even with our students. We will also have board interviews and we're going to be taking all of this information as far as what are we wanting to do to get to that point and they will be gathering that information and articulating it back to us in a well thought out plan. Um, what that will also do is take in account our uh, demographic and population shifts on where we see those trends. Uh, I don't want to scare anybody with this statement but they will look at what we're looking at with our boundaries, is everything still copacetic or do we need to look at those? Um, and having the expertise to guide us through that process is going to be really critical. So um, annually you will start getting updates on this. You will get, uh, you know, the first step tonight is to approve what's going to be in front of you later on the meeting. And then uh, throughout the year and annually, then we will have updates on this 10 year plan moving forward. So it will be a living document. Um, so there will be things that we can look at uh, and what we're really excited for is this will set us up for you know our next bond issue that we'd be looking at doing. It would be doing all the framework to get us to that point and uh, then we can move forward from there. So any questions but I will be talking more about it here in a little bit. Fair enough. Thank you. Up next we have the Community Teachers Association report. Mr. Lappy. Thank you for hanging around. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to do our last shout outs of the year as we wrap up. So at Alma Schroeder, uh, shout out said there's truly no other school like Sweet Home Alma Schroeder. <laughs> Huge shout out to the whole faculty and staff for an absolutely incredible year. Thank you to Mrs. Owens for, or Owen for making Alma Schroeder such a fun place to be. From her fun costumes to her energizing music, she lightens the day and makes everything, even map testing, exciting, which can be hard to do. Blanchard saying a shout out, the whole school family, everyone truly works as a team to promote the highest level of learning and achievement for our students. Every person is willing to fill in and volunteer for anything that needs to be done. They're grateful for their school family. At Central Academy, the staff at CA is amazing. They work hard each day to support the students and let the community know all the great things going on at Central Academy. Shout out to Ursula Wadley, the JAG specialist. Miss Wadley has done a great job this year with the Central Academy JAG program. We've heard her present as well um, the last board meeting, I believe. She has brought in a giant list of guest speakers for our students to speak with about career exploration. Shout out to Tracy Miracle, counselor. This is her first year in the district. She has been an asset to Central Academy staff and students. They love interacting with her. She is knowledgeable and always willing to help anyone in need. Um, shout out to Officer Atlas. Mr. Atlas has done a great job getting to know the students and building relationships with them. He is very caring and understanding. Kathy Harris, she does positive pathways at Central Academy. So Ms. Harris has done a wonderful job with our students at Positive Pathways. She's calm, understanding, and very helpful. She works with, well with staff to accommodate students' needs. Also, Taylor Ainsworth, she does math at Central Academy. She won the new Teacher of the Year Award, and CA is very proud of her. <clears throat> Shout out to Nicole Burley. She teaches history. She will be introducing a new class for our students on street laws and justice. 
Also, Bria Tillman, she's the administrative assistant. Bria came to Central Academy from CHS and has been a blessing. She jumped right in, has gotten to know our students very well. She's built relationships with the students, families, and staff, and she truly is amazing. Shout out to Lawrence Brookins. Mr. Brookins is the art teacher, and he's full of re he is fully retiring this school year, which says he has been an important male role model in the Cape Girardeau Public School District teaching, coaching, and mentoring our students through their ups and downs. Students love and take pride in making their ceiling tile art. Staff and students speak very highly of Mr. Brookins and he will be missed. Shout out to Dr. Zach Payne, the director. Dr. Payne has been director of Central Academy for the past five years and under his leadership, Central Academy has grown tremendously and has become more trauma informed for our students and staff. Dr. Payne has always given everyone the benefit of the doubt and strives for a cohesive working environment. He will be missed by Central Academy and Cape Public Schools. Good luck, Dr. Payne, in your future endeavors. Also, a shout out to Marsha Medlin for all the support she gives to Central Academy. At Clippard, it is so hard to just pick one, this person writes. Our staff here is amazing, from helping each other in a pinch to listening to a problem. Let's not forget the lengths they go for our kiddos. Clippard family truly goes above and beyond to make this the best place to work. Thank you to Eileen Meisner for her years of service to Clippard and the district. And a huge thank you to Tracy Rutherford and all that she has done to support ELL students and the district. Thank you for bridging the communication gap with our families in along the way. Shout out to Randy McWilson at the CTC as he is retiring as well and Chef Yunt at the CTC on the fabulous buffets this year at the CTC. At Early Childhood they wanted to give a shout out to Dr. Herps for all of her years of service at ECC. Also a shout out to Julia Jorgensen for her dedication to ECC and our children and staff and then Angie Schott for her dedication to ECC and our children and staff. At the high school, shout out to Dr. or no, I'm sorry, just to Beth Brunkhorst for her organizing all the state testing. Also Miss Womble and Miss Ulrich for all their work organizing, setting up and tearing down for prom. It was beautiful and the kids had fun. Shout out to all the teachers that showed up to support our students at Evening of Excellence. And then shout out to Miss um, du Bois? Dubois. 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 Thank you. I knew you would help me. She's awesome. Dubois for planning and organizing the faculty scavenger hunt for Teacher Appreciation Week. At Jefferson, we want to give a shout out to Skylar Diamond for making it through her first year of map testing as the counselor. Everything was well organized and ran smoothly. At the junior high, there's quite a few here. Carolyn Thomas, she teach, um, she has this IF group, they call it, which means Intelligent Females Girls Group, and taking care of all the students and their families in the district. Shout out to Beverly Esner for being the map queen of the building. She's always very organized and goes above and beyond for the staff and students, and we will miss her very much. Shout out to all staff at the junior high for an amazing school year. Shout out to Christy Mott for always going above and beyond for our staff, students, and parents. This building literally could not run without her. She knows the answer to every question. Keep her in your prayers as she breaks in two new office coworkers in the next school year. Shout out to Kizzle, Ms. Kizzle, for a very well-earned recognition and for continuing to go above and beyond for her students. Also to Haley Russell for always being supportive and going above and beyond for the kids, for the staff every single day. You are tireless and compassion, uh, compassionate and truly an inspiration. Then I say a shout out to all the TAs and pairs in the building. We cannot thank you enough for your efforts. Shout out to Olivia Carter and Kelly Bright for everything you do, but especially during testing. We see you. These kids know you are a safe place and your work is so admirable. Thank you, Winter Jones, for helping kids in Tiger Den. Thank you to Mackenzie Miller for being a great co-teacher. Thank you, Sheridan Comer, for always being friendly and patient with tech issues. Thank you, Betty Crenshaw and Kim Vowles for making a great eighth grade team. Shout out to Lauren Hansen for making a, such a difference in this building in such a short time. Her work ethic, attention to detail, smiling face, and sweet personality will be greatly missed as she moves on to a new life in Idaho. Uh, and finally, at the middle school, shout out to Tanya Whitehead. She wrote a grant for a science field trip. Also, Melissa Kinder, Brooke Deloach, and Jennifer Wilson for all the prep and organization behind map testing. So um, that is all I have. Thank you for your time. We appreciate you. Um,
and just thanks for another great school year. We do appreciate your work. Do you guys have any questions for me? Shout out to you, Tyler. Oh, yes. well, thank, thank you. you thank you, guys. You have a good evening. I always look forward to those updates, Howard. Thank you. All right, up next we have the Treasurer slash Finance Report, Ms. Dudek. transfer to the special revenue fund leaving us with an ending fund balance of 23 million dollars um, which in percentage wise is 49 percent um, I would encourage you to look at the other reports that kind of, one of them gives a year to date and then um, one of them is the details behind what makes up the revenue and expense numbers and the cash and investment details are listed where the district's money is being held does anyone have any questions Thank you. Thank you. Up next, we have the support and serv support services report. Good evening, board. Uh, so today we started the uh, architects and engineers started their punch list project process for our indoor facility. So that's getting even closer. So um, our contractors are going to be working on that punch list. Uh, the uh, Track surface should be on there by the end of this month for the indoor track portion of it, the long jump, triple jump, and the pole vaulting area. So we're, again, really excited about uh, that facility taking shape and those that will be able to utilize it, even community-wide with our intramural programs and so on and so forth. Red Star is moving along. Uh, utilities are now being in the process of being uh, rerouted, working underneath uh, a couple areas there to bring in. Um, the uh, new electric, uh, our panel, which we've been waiting for over a year for, uh, is still scheduled to come off the delivery line um, this week and uh, will be shipped to us from Georgia. So we're excited to get that panel in place and then we can complete a lot of the wiring from there. Uh, it is all hands on deck out there, but our staff is taking it in and uh, we're really excited about uh, the new location for Central Academy. And uh, with that, Unless you have any other questions or comments, I'll be happy to answer anything I can. Thank you. Up next, we have our board reports, and first is the MSBA delegate report. Dr. Fegley. Um, I don't have a lot, really. Um, we will be um, discussing the adv advocacy platforms in the June meeting it's in the middle of June so we'll be discussing those and then those will be voted on in the October meeting so that's not a lot to, not a lot to tell there's stuff in the in in the works right now but sounds good thank you and up next we have the legislative report Ms. Fudgy I also don't have a whole lot to report um I talked about SB 727 at the last meeting that was signed by the governor so now it's really just a matter of waiting to see how all of that new funding is actually executed um and then other than that there has not been uh, much legislation passed actually <laughs> we're at the end of the legislative session and there was a big filibuster over the last week so they got Almost nothing done. So that's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Next, we have the Cape Public School Foundation report. You that's taking that tonight? Uh, there's not really anything to tell either for that. We did have our um, golf tournament this past weekend. Well, past Monday. Past week last week, yes. Um, and I think we had more more teams than we've had yet. So. That was really good. Uh, we had a little bit of rain. People powered through and, and did well. So, um, and we'll be back next you month with a bigger report. Thank you. I thought you had to compliment me. No, I was talking about Casey. <laughs> Casey played great. Looked right past you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looked over at me. I played <laughs> 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 
That's true. All right, up next we have the approval of consent agenda. Board, this is sent out previously. Hopefully you've had time to review. Also, just a comment, but in the consent agenda, if there ever is um, uh, one of these items that you would like to remove and put under business to vote separately, just know that that is an option. But like I said, these are sent out previously. Minutes from April 22nd, 2024. Payment of bills, board, board meeting dates for 2024-2025. 2025-2026 academic calendar, DESE 2024 summer school application, pest control bid, fire protection bid, and waste disposal and recycling bid. Can I get a motion to approve these items? So moved. Second. Mr. Welker, Mr. Cook, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Up next, we have the business portion of our meeting. And we had uh, the first reading for these in May, or I'm sorry, it is May, in April. And tonight we have the second reading and approval of these board policies. Uh, as you can see, there are several. Um, so I'm just going to go through the titles again. But again, these were sent out previously. Policy GBEBA, which is regarding a drug-free workplace. Policy JFCH, student alcohol and drug use. Policy JFG, regarding searches of students. Policy JHCD, administration of medications to students. Policy GBEBB-4, regarding employee alcohol and drug testing. Policy JFCI-1, regarding student alcohol and drug testing. Policy JG, student discipline. And policy KK, visitors to district property and events. Can I get a motion to approve these policies? So moved. Second. Mr. Welker, Dr. Fegley, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Those are approved. Thank you. Up next, we have the approval of 2024-25 salary schedules. Can I get a motion to approve these schedules? So moved. Second. Mr. Welker, Dr. Fegley, discussion. to the teacher salary schedule, which is the bachelor step one of $808. Um, this is falling in line with our CSIP target that's on week five, where we're developing a long range financial compensation plan. Um, so the increase is 2%, which is our minimum target that we had. Um, all other schedules were increased comparable to that, um, recommending a step for everyone um, with a proposed approximate cost of $1.1 million. Um, we will be getting some additional revenues next year um, from the state, from the foundation formula funding, and also we're anticipating um, some increase to our society ratio for the property tax. If anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer. Any questions? Thank you. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Up next, we have the approval of architect for long range facilities plan. So the motion I'm looking for is to authorize the superintendent or his designee to negotiate with IDS, an architectural firm, to collaborate with Cape Public Schools in identifying, prioritizing, developing, and implementing a 10 year long range facility plan. So moved. Second. Mr. Cairns and Dr. Fegley, discussion. So it seems like we just got done talking about this and uh, having to bring it back up. So how our process worked is we sent, we sent out an RFQ, so a request for qualifications, and there were specifications that uh, we sent out and put it up on markets and publications and public uh, forums for companies that would utilize those services to find these types of jobs. We felt uh, at the time of the turn-in date for those qualifications, the <coughs> middle, we had five outstanding companies that uh, submitted their uh, reports, and we had a committee of seven individuals, uh, two of which were from you on the board, 
so there's representation there. We whittled the five applicants down to three, and then we set up face-to-face uh, -face interviews for presentations, for asking questions, and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, and so from those uh, presentations at the end, we had a meeting and felt that the company before you is going to deliver us the best possible product. So once we had that, I reached back out to them and I wanted to see what their formal, uh, what their formal uh, contract or their formal proposal would look like on a financial basis and a little bit more detail as far as um, what we're gonna be looking for in developing and so on and so forth. And uh, you can see what they've listed here and, and what the cost breakdown has been too. Now, for this financial year that we're currently in, we had already had $60,000 budgeted towards going to this plan in our overall approved agenda. So there will be a slight increase, we'll be able to carry that money over. But one of the things I wanna point out though is that if we move forward <coughs> with this plan, and we run a bond issue uh, in the future and we start implementing those plans and those construction projects, we will actually get about $32,000 back in kind services. Because a lot of the work is being done on the front end, they will not have to do that on the back end towards designing. And so uh, what you see there in the cost, it, it's actually just, uh, just a bit north of $50,000 in actual uh, monies that would be spent. When going through the interview uh, process, and money was not the only determining factor, but I do want to hit on that a little bit because I think there's greater value in this company than what we were seeing in others. One of the companies, their figures was in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, and then another company was going to be based upon square footage, and we have millions of square feet uh, in our district with all of our buildings, and that would have put that number well into six figures as well. However, with IDS's approach in what they were offering us, uh, their platform on how we can look at the various data points that they will be putting in front of us was extremely user friendly, was extremely um, uh, in the weeds on allowing us to make these, these bigger decisions uh, when we're looking at a 10 year plan. <laughs> Our district has never done a 10 year facility plan in the past. Our plans have always been five years and we are at the end of our last uh, facility plan. That was our 2019 Prop Y bond initiative for those that were on the board at that time and to re refresh the uh, memory of uh, those in the community. So we're well overdue and we are excited about the potential of what a 10 year plan will do for us in helping guide not only our budget, but our staffing, our curriculum, our students, our community. And for a that long term of a plan, I firmly believe in those on the committee it felt too, I think the value is there uh, for what we're gonna be doing. The community engagement portion of what we would be looking at with this and allowing all of our stakeholders to have a seat at the table uh, and identify various different projects that need to be completed and need to be done. Uh, I think, you know, again, it's gonna be at a new level of what we've been able to do in the past and what we've been able to offer uh, our constituents and our staff and our students. So before you is our recommendation. Um, again, this is a recommendation of our staff members and also uh, a couple of your fellow board members and we're excited at the potential. Any questions, I'll be happy to answer. I can go in the weeds a lot more if you would like me to. I know I'll just toss one piece. It was really interesting about them, their sight line, their modeling program they leveraged. It was really neat. It's an output, so it's not a static document. That it's dynamic, that whoever's on the board in two years, whoever's mm -hmm. in what, it's a tool that can be leveraged to continually evaluate that plan throughout it. So it's that was one of those appealing pieces to ensure that how the plan is being implemented, that you can continually evaluate it as you go on. So it's not just a static, here's your binder. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, was, that was really great. It, it, what we also need to stress, one of our qualifications for whoever did this plan, we own this plan. They don't retain the rights mm -hmm. over it. And so we were very upfront because what we didn't want to do is burden not only this board or future boards you know, hey, there may be a change in philosophy or something like that that takes place seven years down the road. But 
uh, we ha will have access to that sightline program even if we're not utilizing their services. Now, I will tell you, we have already utilized their services multiple times on our Jefferson project, on the welding lab, on the indoor facility. Um, I think having a uh, relationship with an existing company that continues to perform and uh, out, you know, out distance their goals that we set, uh, you know, says something. So we want to continue that. However, we also need to be realistic. If there happens to be a change, you know, five, six, seven, eight years down the road, this will still be our data, and we will still have access to use that in, in, in to uh, internalize how we want to utilize that. Any other questions? Thanks for all the work on this. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. All right, up next, we have information and proposals from board members. Anybody have anything? Hearing none, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Nice, Langston. Did I get a second? Sorry, I'll second. Second, I'll Crystal. Second. Second. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you all. Signing up to speak at a Cape Girardeau Public Schools Board meeting is easy. Residents and parents or guardians of students have two options, placing an item on the agenda or by making a public comment. Let's take a closer look at how to do each of these. To suggest an item for the school board meeting agenda, First, schedule a meeting with the superintendent or one of the assistant superintendents. This allows you the chance to talk about your concerns with the administration, and it might resolve the issue. If your concern remains unresolved after meeting with the administrator, reach out to the board secretary to make a request for your item to be added to the agenda for the next school board meeting. You will have five minutes to present your issue to the board during the public meeting. Your other option to address the school board is to sign up to make a public comment. To do this, contact the board secretary at least five days before the meeting. You will be added to the list of speakers for the evening and comments will be limited to three minutes per speaker. Remember, whether you're making the request to place an item on the agenda or to make a public comment, please complete the appropriate form and return it to the board secretary at least five days prior to the meeting. Information on how to reach the school board secretary and address the school board can be found on ktigers.com under board. Your input is crucial to the success of our school district. District policies and procedures are stronger when the district receives feedback from CAPE residents and the guardians of students. For more detailed information about speaking at board meetings, please review policy BDDH, which you can find on the district website under board. Thank you for your time and for supporting Cape Dorado Public Schools.